Hello, students. I want to teach you uh, the reproductions in plants. And as reproduction happens in flora of the plant, so I want to dissect these flowers and teach you how to identify different parts of these flowers, the male and the female. You know that some of the flowers, they got fair and the female on one stalk and some that are in a different uh, individual plants. For example, I have different uh, types of the flowers here. So I want to teach you how to first uh, collect your samples. I have actually collected my samples early in the morning but sometimes you cannot take the samples with you. One of the best things is that you just um, sketch and take uh, those details of the flowers that are needed. So you don't need to be an artist, as I told you. The only thing which is necessary for you to do is that to pay attention to the details, anything that you see on the outer part of the plant. And once you start a dissection, then you come with the seeing the exposing the internal organs so you can draw them too in an individual as an individual sketch but for the time being what I see I just draw I do not need to uh, shade you don't need to color you just define the boundaries and those important parts of the thing so So I adjust the camera somehow so that everybody can see that what I'm doing. I'm not sure that it can be seen very well, but I'll just try my do my best. I can start with this flower, which is simpler than the others. Sometimes you may need some special devices. You can use, uh, for example, magnifying glass to watch the plant from very closer and if the structures are very tiny or small like this. You can fix the Xamba and find the best angle that you can see all those different parts of these plants. I try to move everything apart here to expose the female part. The female part of this, usually the males are more than uh, female parts. Uh, we have um, these uh, yellow parts, the male parts, for example, I take one which is already fertilization has happened, that you see that the male has turned into brown or red. That means that's already is being fertilized there. So there is no uh, actually pollen grain remain on the male. These are the anthers, those red parts are the anthers that they carry pollen grain and the male male. They are usually more than female. There is only one actual female, as you can see. I'm not sure if this is obvious for you here. I'll bring it closer. And this one is only one, is the female part, which is longer compared to the males. The males, they come, uh, which is called as a stamen, is made of anther and filament, a filament that connects the anther to the body of this flower. And then there are surrounding going around this female. The female is stick out and is very different from the male part. Still the color stays the same here yeah, after fertilization. On the female part, which is called as a carpa, it has a composed of three parts itself. One the stigma, which is a sticky, is like a, when you touch it, your hand, your skin attaches to it. So it's like a glue, something on it. And it's because it is, has this kind of a structure, because when the pollen grains falls on it, it cannot be easily detached or fall off. After that, this stigma is this, uh, connects to the ovary through a very long or sometimes short style. It's long tube or sometimes shorter tube. Depends the type of the, uh, what type of the, for example, uh, fertilization it has. Or the pollination, for example, if pollens from the same flower falls on the 
uh, female of the same flower or needs to other flowers to pollen from the other flowers to be carried to it. If it has a very shiny, bright, colorful petals, it means that it is uh, something that needs insects to be attract to insect, insects for uh, pollination. So insects, they come and sit on the pollens and the pollen get attached to the body or the wings or the legs and then carry to the other plant or the same plant. So they can place on the female of the same plant or the another. So there are petals, then there are sepals. Sepal is green color, it's like a small leaf on the flower. For oh, this one, it's very small. Then, then the ovary part is like a bulb, is a small rounded thing inside. When I open up, you will see the ovary, you will see inside the ovary ovules or the female gamete, small gamete. Are, gametes are not fertilized yet. When it is gets fertilized, it, it uh, changes or turns into seeds. Now, I first draw whatever I see, the morphology of this uh, or anatomy of this flower. I just want to draw the outer part feature, whatever I see in the exterior of this plant because I, I not done the dissection also. Do not need, as I told you, do not need to do the shading. Your pen, pen, pen you should not use pen, it should be pencil, it should, it should be sharp enough. The line should be not broken and should be continuous. It's very important. I check everything. The, the leaf, actually uh, so the petals are small, but a little bit like long and at the tip they are rounded a bit. It's not tipped, it's not, the tip is not sharp, it's not pointed, it's a bit rounded. So these are the things, the details that I have to notice. A bit wider at this section and a bit narrower at the end. This is what I do. I'm not sure that you can see my sketch or not because yeah, the light may doesn't let me to show you well. I do my best, make it a little bit like bolder so you can see. And at the end, there is a wall of small, like a stalk that actually joins this petal to the body of the flower. And the same for the other one. It has five similar petals with the same structure. At the base, at the base is not rounded. If you have the eraser, you can erase it. So at the base, it is like this. There is this one also continues in the body of it. So another petal again at the base. It is a bit wide. It's a bit narrow. Goes off at the at the tip. It is rounded. Then this part continues with the whole body. So again, another one originates from this part and a smaller stalk at the beginning. And then again, same thing. And goes for the fourth petal. As you can see, and also the last one. Okay, so now the inside is also very important. What I see, these are the sepals. But I want to pull them a little bit apart, away from the this female and the male part of it. Away apart, away away. But I don't want to damage it, so we can see the inside too. So these are the small sepals. Here, here, here. I don't see the other side. I don't draw them. And these are how many? One, two, three. Let's see how many males it has. Uh, one, two. One, two, three, four, five. It has five anther or five stamen. So. I draw them and the shape of them again once more more time I look at them very from very close to see how they may look like. 
They're all shorter than the female. So this is how it may look like. One, two, three, four, and five. And at the middle, it has a very long female. It's like a small tongue away. The tip is a bit rounded, that where the stigma is. These are the details that I'm, I'm actually noticing. And I look at the base, the ovary. Yes, it's obvious from here. It is a little bit like that. And the stalk of the flower. So these are the details that I need from this flower. I can put the flower on this paper, paste it on it, so you know, which one belongs to which one is drawing, belongs to which drawing. So these uh, flowers is already been fertilized, these, because the pollens are gone and the flower is like wilting. The petals are not that much fresh, but they, this has happened recently, it's not so long ago. Okay. Paste this paper here. I will show the details under the microscope to you so it can be seen better for this flower. If you give me time, I just Turn this off for a moment and go for the next recording. As you can see, I have mounted the flower on this slide. So to watch on the microscope, I'll remove the petal because I don't want it. I only leave, I only leave one petal on it. I just want to see the different structures first, and little by little, I uh, detach each of them and watch them separately under the microscope. Uh, first, I found the male part and female part on the whole thing, and then uh, take one of the uh, stamens, the male part, and look individually, separately under the microscope. So I will uh, show the photo of photomicrograph of those uh, part of the plants that I have actually put under the microscope on the slide of the microscope. I watch them with the lowest magnification. I will share them with you. Well, I just want to show now another flower and different structures of it. Look at this flower now. When you look at it, you don't see anything. Or they are just the petals. This is a petal. I, I want to see the inner structure to find the female and the male part. I have to take this one off. So I'll also this one. I'll remove it until I reach to the inner part. I crack it apart and I see male and female all in here. These are the male and female structures. I'll bring it closer to the camera. I'll try to show again this one under the microscope and show the different parts of it to you. So this is the stigma, the female, which is the longest part, and it's connected to the ovary at the end. It's a, like a bulb like a structure, it's rounded, bigger, swollen, and it's surrounded by a lot of anthers. A lot of male parts and the anthers they contain these pollen grains it attaches on my skin they have like a yellowish powder so i just want to show this structure now for you under the microscope i've got one more of the different flower so i want to show you the female and male part of this one so the first thing again we remove the uh, petals but well, we have to make sure that we do not damage the male and female. I just take and we just find the female by just 
first removing the petals and then I find the ovary, this is the ovary, and this is the side of the femur. I continue because the side is quiet, hard, so it cannot be broken easily. I just pull it off. These are what you see here on the shape. These are the yellow parts that are uh, pollen on the male far part, which is anther, and the anther is surrounding the femur. So those parts around the shape things that I will show you under the microscope, there are femur parts, the stigma of the femur. So I just, this is the, this is a style of the femur, and I pull, 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 so this is the whole femur part came out. So this is purple, looks like the small green leaves, purple, and then this is ovary, the swollen part is ovary. And then the style, longer style, and then at the tip of it, it is stigma. But this one has four, five stigmas, as you can see. So I want to show this one also under the uh, microscope so we can see better. So this is ovary, which is at the end of the style, which is the female part. This is a stigma's head, the female head, which is full of pollen grain, as you can see. This is the stigma, that's the femur part. It's quite hairy for this one. And, this, and the tip of it is this, uh, actually, is uh, called a stigma. And this long tube sent connecting the stigma to the ovary is called a style. And at the end of this style, and it be the femur part, is that swollen part, which is ovary that I will show you. Wait. So I cut the ovule apart, and you can see the, or, or the ovary. And this is one section, a small part of the uh, ovary. And you see the ovule on the left side, very small rounded one. Actually, it's, uh, it's ovule is not fertilized yet. This is the inside of the ovary of this very tiny, tiny, small bee plant. You see the anther here is more obvious and it is yellowish color in color. So there are the pollen grains stuck on it. And you see that very particular stem. I just saw the tube is going actually exactly in the middle of them. And it has some hair-like structures on it. That one is the female style, which ends to stigma. I will show it to you because I need to a little bit change the position of the slide. This is such a beautiful sample. This is the female part of this flower, but as you can see the pollen grains there, those yellow parts, the yellow particles pasted on the stigma is pollen. Let me bring it close and show it to you. This is anther. I just show it to you in a different depth. And you can see, you can follow the filament of the anther. It goes down into the, uh, towards the base of the flower. But this is the head of it that carries the pollen grains on it. Now, I'm trying to zoom this one and bring it a bit and just put it in the center. These are the other filaments, but they have been damaged. And I tried to shake these pollen grains away from this stigma, but it looks like now they are hanging around it. You can see them. Let me uh, lower down the light a bit, the intensity of the light, so it can be seen better. Yes, uh, you can see the pollen grains now. Uh, hanging around the stigma. I cut the ovary open, a very small thin sample of it. Look at the ovules, they are like a fish egg inside it. Aren't they beautiful? So I try to again lower down the in light intensity. It's not easy to fix the camera on one point. Um, now, the 
are so beautiful. You look at the ovules. They should be fertilized now. Look at them. They are in, this is inside the ovary. I just cut a very small, thin layer of this uh, section of this ovary. And look at the egg. It's, it's not egg yet. It looks like the egg. But it's like, uh, they call it a seed later. There are ovules that are, look like being fertilized. So beautiful. So mysterious.